Evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. The U.S. ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, has told an impeachment inquiry that U.S. President Donald Trump directed pressure on Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. Sondland says he told Ukrainians that the release of U.S. aid would likely not occur until Ukraine made a public statement on the investigations demanded by Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump. The inquiry could see Trump removed from office, but only if the House of Representatives impeaches him and the Senate convicts him. Mr. Giuliani's requests were a quid pro quo for arranging a White House visit for President Zelensky. Mr. Giuliani demanded that Ukraine make a public statement announcing the investigations of the 2016 election, DNC server, and Burisma. Mr. Giuliani was expressing the desires of the President of the United States and we knew these investigations were important to the president. Israel says it has hit dozens of targets in Syria belonging to the government and allied Iranian forces. The Israeli military says the wide-scale strikes responded to rockets fired by an Iranian unit into Israel. Syria says two civilians died and that Syrian air defenses shot down most of the missiles over Damascus. Other reports say the death toll was higher. Local reports said loud explosions were heard in the capital. Pictures on social media showed a number of fires. Paramedics in Hong Kong have brought out injured protesters from the Polytechnic University campus after three days of violent clashes with police. Protesters have holed up at Hong Kong's Polytechnic University campus with police strictly controlling all exits and roads to the university. Protesters said that supplies are quickly drying up and some have already turned themselves in to the authorities, but around 100 still remain inside the campus. About 1,100 people had been arrested in the past 24 hours on charges including rioting and possession of offensive weapons. A Maltese businessman has been arrested as part of the investigation into the murder of a journalist two years ago. Daphne Caruana Galizia, an anti-corruption blogger, was killed by a car bomb near her home in October 2017. Jorgen Fenech was detained by armed officers after his yacht was intercepted and searched. It comes a day after the Prime Minister, Joseph Muscat, said he would consider a pardon for the alleged middleman in the case. Malta's handling of the case has drawn international criticism. More than 100 schools were closed and residents in high-risk regions are poised to evacuate as Australia's devastating bushfires opened up a new front in South Australia state. Australia has been battling wildfires across a number of fronts for several days, endangering thousands of people in many communities. Blazes so far this month have claimed at least four lives, burnt about two and a half million acres of farmland and bush and destroyed more than 300 homes. A fresh battle line was drawn as 50 fires sprung up in South Australia state where officials lifted the fire danger warning to catastrophic as temperatures passed 42 degrees Celsius. Italy is set to restart its anti-flood project after Venice was severely flooded last week. The MOSE project is an integrated system of submerged gates that can be raised to the surface at three key junctures leading to the Venice Lagoon. It is the centrepiece of a plan that, when completed, should be able to protect the city from floodwaters up to 300 centimetres, nearly twice as high as those seen in the latest floods. However, the plan had been delayed for several times since it was first drawn up in 1989. The government has now announced it will restart the project and vowed to complete it by 2021. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has become Japan's longest serving premier. The 65-year-old, who served his first term for just one year before quitting in 2007, made a comeback in December 2012, promising a stronger military and a revamped economy while aiming to revise Japan's post-war pacifist constitution. Pope Francis has arrived in Thailand to meet its small but devoted Catholic minority on a seven-day Asian trip that will include a family reunion. Waiting for a glimpse of the pontiff, excited Catholics gathered around the Vatican's Bangkok embassy. The visit coincides with the 350th anniversary of the first papal mission in Siam, the former name of Thailand. Catholics are a tiny minority in mostly Buddhist Thailand, accounting for less than 2% of the population. And finally, Oregon police received a call regarding a group of youngsters playing basketball in the middle of the night. So naturally, they joined the game. A video clip shared on the police department's very own social media accounts showed the uniformed officers shooting hoops with the youngsters. This video was published to Facebook with the caption, If you can't beat them, join them. On Wednesday, the video had over 30,000 views. 
And that's your international news around the world in five.